piece that I would say to cardiologists, because you yeah. mentioned that, mm -hmm. I was really lucky. Uh, I had a fantastic doctor, a cardiac electrophysiologist, who sort of, you know, took the reins of my situation and made sure my care was coordinated and 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 did it in a very human way. Um, and, you know, didn't treat me like patient number, whatever. <laughs> but the, the me, the real person that was sitting there, that was someone who would have to go on with their life. But not everyone gets that sort of personalized care, right? And I think, I wish that they would know that this is all really hard. I mean, even if they know it's all really hard, but we're trying the best we can with a really hard situation. Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, if we're seem anxious or panicked or have too many questions or or whatever <laughs> that that's just a normal reaction to the situation and you know having having that seeking out information the other pieces i would say that seeking out information for some people is actually how they cope i'm a woman and those many years ago, I, I was, um, you know, a younger woman. And so I get the bias of, you know, treat, there can be bias against young women that seem anxious as, you know, that it's just anxiety that, you know, like we, we're hysterical and just need to calm down. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I'm sure men encounter that too and all kinds of people. But mm -hmm. I think I've encountered, I've seen a lot of doctors over the years now. Um, I've moved, I've changed insurance. I've, you know, so I've had six cardiologists. Um, oh. I like the ones that don't assume me speaking fast or having a lot of questions mm. means I need therapy for anxiety. That's just me seeking out information right. that I need to cope with this and to feel prepared for things that could happen because I live with a lot of uncertainty in my life and knowing what the, the things I need to know are not always relevant for right now, but they're things I'm worried about could happen or, and it's, it's not that I'm worried really, but I think this could happen. What would I do in that situation? So sometimes I've had some not great experiences uh, with doctors where I say, you know, if this ever happens, what could I do? If this ever happens, what could I do? And they think like, you need to calm down. And it's like, but I need that information. So patting me on the head and soothing me is not the right approach. <laughs> no, not at all, right? It's really right. frustrating. I, right. And I, I think there are some people who certainly do find information, too much information at once, stressful. But then there's this subgroup of people that are information seekers and that if our doctors don't point us in the right direction, we're going to go home and Google and we're going to find it on our own. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, you know, I, I prefer the doctors that, that recognize that seeking out information is not necessarily an indication of anxiety. Yeah. It's just me trying to cope with this reality that I live, which cannot be conveyed in a 20 minute doctor's appointment, right? I know. And that's the whole problem, right? Every time that I'm going to an appointment again, every six months, I have so many questions. And each appointment, I have so many more questions, but I never right. have time to ask them because after 10, 15 minutes, it's like, all right, you got to go out and it's the next, next person. There, yeah, it's frustrating, right? Especially for takes, something like this. Yeah, and it takes, you know, years mm -hmm. to, because like you said, we only get the, you know, you only have so much time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you only get to ask a few questions and you may not know what questions to ask, right? You don't yeah. know what you have questions yeah. about until things happen or you learn mm -hmm. about things. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you you get an opportunity to ask those few questions at every appointment. Well, and then you, you know, you go to appointments for years and then you're like me 13 years later and I've absorbed all of this information and I feel like my need for education and information has been met both by my medical providers, but also from seeking it out on my own. And 
that is, I think, the piece where I think the medical community can do better. Um, I agree. There's a lot of there's a lot of needs <laughs> in this population, right? And we can't, you know, wave a, a magic wand and make everyone have access to the best care and you know have all the the best situation. But I think we could be better at the sort of information education piece of things that help people navigate their way through this really messy situation of surviving a cardiac arrest.